Welcome back guys. Today we get that in there. Alright guys, so the first thing we have to do before we get this engine back in the car is I now have our intake manifold gasket. It arrived this morning. I've also put on the exhaust manifold here. Painted up black and I think it actually looks really, really good. It's not that rusty, gunky colour that was in there before. Kind of matches the engine nicely. So I'll get the, uh, we'll get this intake on as quickly as possible. Get that squared away, then we can get the clutch on, the new clutch. Um, starter motor and things like that. And then get it bolted up, squared away. New oil filter, new oil, new um, gearbox oil, things like that. Get that all in ready to dump straight back into the engine bay. Okay guys, the intake is back on. It is all hooked up. You can see the brace there that I painted down the bottom. It is all set to go. So now we're just gonna pull the oil filter off the other side, put a new filter on. Um, nothing too extravagant with the filter because I was sneaking suspicion that I will have to drain the fuel out of the filter and the oil again sometime soon after I give it a bit of a run. I don't wanna go and spend a heap of money on a new filter just down there when I'll just be replacing it again anyway. So we'll just get this filter off now, put the new one on, and then we'll put some, uh, put some oil in it. All right. Done. All right, now we're gonna fill this thing back up with some oil. Now I'm just going for some Shell Helix HX5 15W40. It is re re uh, recommended by the manufacturer. I'm not too worried at the moment just because I'm not gonna go out and be pushing this thing too hard. Um, I just want some good clean engine oil in there um, when I'm taking it in to get, um, or when I'm driving it or starting it up, I just want some basic engine oil in there. When I really do start pushing this thing to its limits, I will put a bit more serious stuff in there, but I got this stuff on sale and 
Um, yeah, we'll throw this in there. It takes three liters this engine, including the oil, um, the oil filter. So I'll dump three liters in there now, through the top, and um, we'll uh, get it all taken care of. Please don't mind the birds. I did check. There is a uh, a plover nest currently being built on the lawn across the, across the road, so. It is getting a little bit protective, I believe. Daddy, yeah, mate. The same show again, please. The same show again? Yeah. Sure. All right, be right back. Daddy Judy's call. All right, I'm back. You always got to have the right TV show on, especially when you're four and a half years old. Alright guys, it's come to the point where I tell you about the clutch that we are putting uh, on this engine and in this car. Um, I mentioned previous video that I went to another shop in town to try and see if they could find a heavy duty clutch for me and they literally said to me, no, nah, it's too much effort, you're better off going down to Auto One in Townsville, they'll be able to help you out. I was blown away. I couldn't understand why someone would give up, I was willing just to buy it right there on the spot. I was like, alright. Jumped in my car, went down to Auto One, went in and then saw them and said, yep, cool, this is what we can get for you. And I was like, oh, look. something just didn't sit right with me. And I was like, I'm just gonna hold off for a little bit. Turns out a few weeks later, the Extreme Performance Clutches actually came on sale and it had to get actually shipped up from, um, from Sydney. And what I would have normally been paying for the clutch itself, um, I actually got it cheaper, including the shipping and freight from Sydney, um, than just buying it straight off the shelf um, if they had it in stock. So I was pretty happy about that. This thing is uh, awesome. It gives you a whole much more um, pressure on the plate um, and on the flywheel. Um, you can see here um, the forks are a little bit more beefier on the actual casing there. Um, nice and strong. Um, so we'll stick it in. We've got to put the flywheel actually back on, which is just there. Um, we'll get that back on. Now I did check to see if it needs machining. It doesn't. It's uh, it seems to be really good. Um, we'll put it back on. We'll get the clutch all organised. Get the bell housing on. Um, and again, I was really stoked about this bell housing because it itself there is no play in it whatsoever. So. When I took it off, that's the first thing I checked. I was really, really curious to see if there's gonna be any play in the shaft in there, and there's not, which I'm absolutely stoked about. Um, it, when I test drove the car, it shifted really well. It handled really, really nicely, changing the gears nice and smooth. So I'm confident that it's gonna be good enough to stick in the car and still keep using and flog the absolute guts out of it. If I need to rebuild it, obviously I will have to, um, you can rebuild these gearboxes, but at the moment, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to sit there and use it as it is, put this clutch in it with the same flywheel on it, um, and away we go.
Now what I'm going to do guys, I've just put that bolt in there to hold it steady. I will pull it out shortly. I'm just going to put some Loctite, some medium strength Loctite on these nuts, or these bolts that go in. Alright, I'm just keeping it a bit steady. And I might have to rotate that one around a bit actually, because it's actually off center. That looks better. Alright, a bit more on this. Next one. Welcome back, it's a new day guys, and it was raining last night, and it is extremely tropical today. Very, very steamy, um, very sticky. Even better thing, we can get our engine back in our car. Now, I've turned the car around. Now what I actually did overnight, um, is I actually gave the interior, of the engine bay, a bit of a paint with some silver paint, and it's actually come up really, really nice, and I'm actually very happy. This color is the same color I plan on painting the interior once I get the floor pan all done. All right, so most of the stuff's good to go. I just need to pull some tape off um, and get that all tidy away, then drop the engine in, hook up the clutch. I want to bleed the clutch before I do anything else, just in case there's anything that needs to be changed. I'll just pull the engine back out and change it and then get that taken care of. So I'll get started pulling all this tape off. Um, just cutting, I've got, just got some fishing line here, just holding up the exhaust um, and the drive shafts and things like that. Get that taken care of, try and drop the engine back in, and away we go. So, let's do it.
that looks much, much better with all the tape removed. It looks nice and neat. So again, this is the color I paint, plan on painting the interior of the car. Okay, it's gonna look nice. It's a metallic silver. Um, you can just see a bit of metallic coming out in it when the sun hits it. It's now time to put our engine back in. Now, got the two side mounts put on, um, ready just to drop in there. I've got oil in it. I've got gearbox oil in there as well. I put that in there, the 2.2 liters of it that's needed. That's all set to go. Um, I'll put it in. I'll bleed the clutch, make sure that's all good to go. Then we can start hooking up all the electrics on it. But right now, swing it around, dump it in, and uh, see how well it looks in there with the new engine bay. Oh, before I forget, one thing I did do for the engine mounts is I made some solid engine mounts. Now, if you've ever seen um, Matty Hull's pro uh, channel, The Nugget Project, he made some um, solid engine mounts like so. Now I'll link it, um, I'll link these up either up the top or um, down below to the episode where he go, gives you the instructions to make these. These things are solid as a rock. Um, so there I've got the front and uh, rear engine mounts going in, north and south, and uh, we'll get them bolted in. Uh, get them all squared away, drop the engine in, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go with this. But yeah, very happy with this um, and how they turned out. All right, boys and girls, the engine is in. Shout out to my dad who came over and he gave me a hand dropping this thing in. I planned on uh, filming it, but I mean, it's not very exciting. It's just dropping an engine in an engine bay and a bit of mucking around, get the engine mounts hooked up. Um, put the bolts through, get it all tightened down, and things like that. So now I just have to run the, uh, the wiring loom to all the different points, connect it all up, and see if we can get this thing going. So I've already bled the clutch too, so it's got a nice firm feel to it, which is lovely. Um, and yeah, we'll just get it, get it all hooked up, get it going, and um, see if we can get this thing running tonight and get it started. Okay guys, the engine is back in the car. The wiring is all hooked up. I had to fix up a few different wires because uh, like I said, mentioned in a previous video, some of the connections got very brittle and um, they just literally crumbled when I took them apart. So I had to replace those connections. But I must say this engine bay is looking absolutely magnificent um, with that new silver paint in there all the stuff back in there and it's nice and tidy now you don't see excess junk all over the place so i'm going to try and fire it up now hoping 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 everything goes i just have to hook up the battery and i'll be putting that in the cabin for the moment um, hook up the battery and then see if we can get this thing started and if we can i'm going straight to bed because i'm tired and it's now probably about 11 o'clock at night so hook up the battery see if we can get it started and then it may be bedtime. Okay guys, we're gonna finish that video off now. I know you didn't see the car um, and if it fired straight up or not. Fact is it actually didn't. I didn't have any power getting to the fuel pump and it didn't look like I was getting any spark to the ignition coil either. So 
I took the car into the guys at Cadco Off-Road. They're doing the floor pan, fixing that up for me, and they're actually going to have a look at the issue there as well. Um, but the car's been taken in. Um, it should be back in the next couple of days or so, and once that's back, we can then uh, paint the interior and get that all taken care of, and hopefully I can diagnose what the issue was because I really did not touch anything. Um, I just followed the whole operations manual for the car and then went to fire it back up no power to the fuel pump or to the ignition coil had I replaced the fuel pump and tried figuring out the issue had no success so hopefully they have a better chance of figuring out what's going on now um, but this while the car's in there tomorrow I'm going to clean up the garage it's an absolute mess and uh, get that taken care of and then we can get the car back and then just start slowly chipping away at all the all the things we need to get done with it so Hope you enjoyed this episode guys, um, I'll see you next time, if you liked it give this video a like, if you haven't already subscribe so you can keep up with this channel, leave a comment if you have any questions or anything you would like to know and I'll get to those, um, but yeah, hope you're really enjoying this build uh, and I'll see you next time.